treating people with drugs and they were supposed to cure heart disease and they haven't. Mm -hmm. More than half of my patients have normal cholesterol. Uh, that doesn't make sense. Uh, and so I began really to think about it. And I looked down at the coronary artery on the heart, and it would be red and swollen. And that's two of the cardinal signs of inflammation. And then some really smart people started writing uh, about inflammation and how it is really the trigger for atherosclerosis or heart disease. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I began... Uh, to really think about doing something different and begin to, to say, yeah, I'm, I'm winning battles every day, but I'm losing the war. And so uh, that led me ultimately to change what I was doing in my career. Yeah, so in what way did you change? What was the biggest change? Well, I, what I did was uh, I decided that uh, if inflammation was the cause of heart disease, mm -hmm. um, and everybody knew that, um, all the bright guys from across the country had worked out all the details of the process. And knowing that inflammation follows injury, mm -hmm. uh, big medicine didn't ask what's causing the injury. Big medicine asked, what drug can we develop that reduces inflammation and there we, before we reduce heart disease? Uh. So we went all through these machinations of trying to say that statin <clears throat> drugs were anti-inflammatory. And they convinced lots of people they were, and they convinced they should uh, treat people without heart disease, but elevated CRP levels with statins. And, mm -hmm. you know, so millions and millions of people were put on that drug unnecessarily. To tell you how crazy it is, right now there is a clinical trial going on treating heart disease with a very powerful immunosuppressive drug that was originally used in transplantation. Really? It's, it's crazy. It, you know, it, it boggles the mind. Wow. Why don't we ask what really is injuring the artery that's triggering this process? Right. Well, I guess there's no money in that, and that's why we, nobody has paid attention to it, except a few of us around the country who are um, trying to make some noise. Well, I guess it makes sense from a purely sort of capitalistic perspective, doesn't it? I mean, if you can develop a drug that actually lowers some arbitrary number um, that may or may not be arbitrary, but, you know, many times it could be. And if you can sort of artificially lower that number to some degree or raise it, I guess, um, and there's money in that drug, I mean, it makes sense. But, gosh, I just wish things were different, <laughs> you know, uh, with doctors would be different. Well... Uh, love makes the world go round, but money greases the wheel. And so, you know, Pfizer has got uh, in their pockets $120 billion from Lipitor alone. $120 billion? From Lipitor. Just from Lipitor. And they, 30, prob we and they probably yeah, have... 30, oh, so, sorry about that. We probably have... Uh, how many different medications do they have, I wonder, to, you know, besides Lipitor? Well, there are about five of the statin drugs... Wow. And we have some new ones now called the PCSK9 inhibitors. And I have a cardiology friend who's a great guy and a smart guy, but completely believes the cholesterol stuff. And he has heart disease. And he has now got his LDL cholesterol with his PSK9 drug down to 30. What? To 30? And he's my age. And the evidence is very clear that in older ages, people with high cholesterol live longer. And there's no evidence that lowering cholesterol in anybody over 65 does any good. In fact, the evidence that, that treating people with a statin drug in any age, of any sex, um, is of minimal to any benefit and has side effects. I mean, there's a thing called the number needed to treat. And that is, if I treat 100 patients, and a cure 99, then the number to treat needed to treat is uh, one. If I treat 100 patients and only one gets well, then the number needed to treat is 99. Mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, statin drugs are for symptomatic people or people with known heart disease. It's about 98. People without heart disease, so-called primary prevention, the number needed to treat is about 1,000. Isn't that crazy? 
It's bizarre. I mean, why would an intelligent doctor prescribe a drug that only has a one in 99% chance of helping you? Why would you take it if you knew that? They don't tell you that. 